confident, your feelings should be off. Fake it till you make it. Makes sense that you're not confident if you don't have proof of why you should be confident. I know people that became more confident after plastic surgery. This child, I accept her for who she is, for who she was, and in accepting her for herself, I am. There is a pattern that I observe in all those influences that being confident just for the external things, which is not real confidence. Let's be honest, your money may fluctuate, your weight may fluctuate, your appearance overall will fluctuate throughout your life. You may not have the romantic relationship that you brag about forever, that validation that makes you confident. There is a lot of stuff that is concerning. And what's true about most of these influencers is the fact that they base their confidence on external things like their achievements, their money, their husband, the plastic surgery that they've done to themselves. I'm not hating on anyone, but yeah, if that content works for you, then it works for you. If not, let's dive deeper into this topic and see how we can truly be confident in ourselves despite the waves of life. Because life is a wave. We should go with the flow. We can't control everything. Tomorrow, another pandemic may hit. We don't know what can happen in this world. You understand me? When you are up, it's easy to be fucking confident. But how do you feel that self-worth when you are down? and people from your environment are trying to bring you down even more, how can you manage that? Especially if you have a disorder like me. Again, I will tell you in this video, I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder and moderate of a lot of chronic diseases. I'm underweight, if you can see. I won't go into this story, at least not now. For me, it's even hard to speak for long periods of time because of both bile reflux and pharyngeal reflux. Sometimes my voice becomes raspy, but still I have the confidence to show up on the camera, to show up on YouTube after procrastinating for so long, two years, because I genuinely believe that you can find some inspiration in my personal stories, some inspiration to continue on this path of healing. Even if my voice shakes, even if my first videos can be embarrassing, but I still decide to show up. First of all, awareness. Awareness of your self-worth problem. When did it start exactly? What made you feel like you are not worthy of good things? Sometimes those disorders or just being at a very low moment in your life, even without referring of any disorders long term, it can really affect your judgment. Sometimes trauma is like a domino effect. You get one trauma and then another comes up and another comes up and another comes up and we find ourselves in the middle of the tornado thinking like, what the fuck, I didn't process the last trauma. No, you had difficulty in processing the trauma because you didn't have supportive people around you. That's why it's important to be very aware of the trauma because your confidence issues are not from you. This voice in your head that criticizes you constantly, this is a projection from others. It's very likely that you internalize the bullying, people's opinions of you. You, you internalize even society's standards. We are bombarded information from social media with all those celebrities with their perfect lives and we start to compare ourselves. This leads me to the second thing, comparison by social media. I deactivated my social media a week or two weeks ago. I deactivated my Instagram and I already start to see, not that I wasn't confident because I still had confidence before, but there was a thing that happened this week that made me quite fluctuate, quite lose faith. I had another episode, if I'm being honest, of being triggered by people, by my family, 
by almost everything around me and I started to feel a little bit shaky but then I remember what, why do I put so much expectations on myself yes it's good to have expectations of yourself in the way that you expect to reach your potential but you don't really have to become like a millionaire in your 20s or do something extra fabulous to feel worthy of living not necessarily you to, to quit social media but limit time and be mindful of what you're consuming stop consuming only toxic productivity videos because it won't help you what toxic productivity does to you it just keeps you stuck in this cycle of shame and guilt and if you know more about spirituality or the metaphysics, the metaphysics shame and guilt are the lowest emotions on the consciousness scale they are a lot of such a low vibration that's that's insane why do people commit suicides think about that those that feel such an intense shame about themselves or they can't live with guilt type of suicidal people who are people pleasers literally people pleasers operate out of guilt out of shame i say that because i was a people pleaser myself and it hurt me the long time i was feeling guilty for my mother's unhappiness i was feeling shame for the fact that my father abandoned me i was feeling shame for the fact that i was raised by grandparents in the countryside I was shamed for my nationality. I was shamed for my sense of self. I was shamed for, for literally everything. I was shamed by others. Then I placed that shame into myself. But how do we heal those feelings of shame? Simple. We do shadow work. We try to dive deep into our subconscious as deeper as we can. I'm not saying you to go to a hypnotherapist or hypnotize yourself because I tried one time and it was terrible like all those repressed emotions out all at once and it wasn't the right time I believe I wasn't ready to deal with all that I think healing happens in divine timing sorry if I'm not very coherent with my story shadow work can be done in a multitude of ways most of the time I did shadow work in art therapy Combining art therapy with shadow therapy is extremely therapeutic. Sometimes you can't really be aware of some dark things within you just by writing in a journal or just by simply thinking. Sometimes you need another form of outlet. And for me, I was able to face my shadow. My biggest shadow was my repressed anger. And because it was something that I repressed, this made me very passive-aggressive, this made me self-destructive, this made me have outbursts when I didn't want it to have those outbursts. This made me feel triggered at very simple things. And I'm so glad that I've dealt a lot with that. I saw my anger just get out through art therapy and I don't think I would have admit my anger just by writing. Or just by thinking. I've got to see it with my own eyes, how it looks like, what colors, what... It looks disturbing to me actually. So because we talk about shadow work and uh, art therapy, it's very important to connect with your inner child. And if you are a, a young adult, it's very important to connect then to your inner teenager. This can be hard at first. Now how to do that because personally i've done that more with my intuition i just try to connect with the things that i liked doing as a child for example i like little mini cars i like drawing a lot and by me starting continuing to draw and be very creative this outlet allowed me to connect with my and also through therapy you can also do guided meditation. You have to imagine a room in which your inner child is there. This gets me to the next one, self-criticism. You gotta get into a habit where you're listening to your thoughts on a daily basis. Those subtle thoughts that appear 
randomly in moments of the day. And see if the inner critic appears. Things, let's say an example, you forget something at home, you forget your phone, you have to come back, maybe you have a meeting or something, and then you tell yourself, oh my god, I'm so stupid, stop saying that. Your brain believes everything that you say, and it's not like I'm regurgitating the stuff that every YouTuber out there says, but th this is true. How to be the inner critic, actually? We're getting back to the inner child and the inner teen. Imagine your inner child. Take actually a photo. I'm gonna bring a photo with myself. If only you could see how much we're looking like. I just became my inner child. You see, I slightly cut my hair off because I was a tomboy when I was a child and I accepted that. I accepted my androgynous side in me. I accepted this child. I accept her for who she is, for who she was. And in accepting her for herself, I am accepting myself. This is me. This is how I was before society expectations, before things like that. But I think I was still very traumatized. I had PTSD since I was four years old. Look at me. Look at me. You guys, I'm so happy. Look at this. The inner child. Look at your inner child and imagine every time when you critic yourself you criti every time you criticize yourself you criticize your inner child you criticize this sweet little child that deserve nothing else than just love nothing else than just love and affection also think about your inner teenager at the most rebellious one probably the most naive one the teenager that you are probably embarrassed of because maybe you accepted a lot of shit in the past. You maybe enabled a lot of people's behaviors, but you didn't know better. This was your coping mechanism. And you don't have to stay in the same energy forever. I think this is the way that you stop criticizing. I mean, look at this. You can criticize this child for being fat, for being to with the heads in the clouds, for, pay, for being uh, too loud or too quiet, blah blah blah. You can't. I think that the moment that you heal the relationship with your inner child and your inner teen, it's the moment that you see your confidence skyrocket more. But not so much. Let's see the other chapter. Another thing that I want you to do is, if you see others in a superficial way, like let's be honest, if you are kind of a superficial person and you have this thing in you to judge people by their appearance, whether they have designer clothes or not, do some trauma healing on that because I think you've been conditioned to people in such a superficial way that you actually may have started to see yourself in the same way. Like, no, I'm not worthy if I'm not looking like a model. I'm not worthy if I'm overweight, I'm not worthy if I'm underweight, this creates, like, I think this is a shadow, or no, sorry, I think this is a mirror, you know, what you think of others <laughs> is what you think of yourself, can never be confident, and I'm sure you will uh, agree to that, I'm sure you all know that, bullies can never be confident, people that are insecure are more likely to judge others are more likely to speak shit about appearance or hair or whatever. You can speak shit about my shirt right now. You can speak shit about my teeth or whatever. That's so why I, I don't care because who I am at the soul level. When you realize your soul essence, and I think for that uh, maybe you need some sort of spirituality, but it's inclusive. You can still uh, believe that we are or not. I don't really know, because when I was an atheist, I still believe that people have souls, like, not in the way that there was any afterlife, but in the way that there is an essence to each of us. And when I started to become spiritual, I started to see people even deeper than that. But I think it's enough if you start to see people more on their personality, more on their mindset than seeing just the outer appearance, the surface level, right? Because what you see in others can sometimes be a reflection of you. 
sometimes not all the time because other times people are just very shitty and it has nothing to do with you it has to do with them so this is why this is the most important because it's the most underrated it's simply just self-care making sure because I know it's hard to have a mental health disorders and sometimes I'm honest sometimes I procrastinate cooking or doing things for myself or some people feel like they can go shower or they can go brush their teeth there's nothing shameful about that but uh, usually this is the first step to building confidence because most small things like taking a salt bath with some sand I don't know, or burning some lavender sage I think self-care looks different for everyone but what I want to say is make sure you do the basic self-care on a daily basis Get yourself the healthy food prepare yourself healthy meal make sure you do all the necessary things also do small little, little things for yourself small things but make yourself feel loved and we're getting to the other part <laughs> it gets juicy know your love language know your love language because it's important to show yourself love the way that you would like to feel loved let's say if your love language is words of affirmation i, I don't know Whatever your love language is, try to show that to yourself instead of showing this to other people constantly, constantly. And this led me to the next thing. Try to hold on boundaries as much as you can. Block people, deactivate, go off such social media if you feel like it. Say people no, quit becoming a people person. I won't get more into that because uh, obviously it's gonna take way longer. But uh, I think that once you heal your shame and guilt, you will heal your people pleasing tendencies and you will you know, better say no because you, you won't feel the same guilt, right? Did I cover everything? I'm sorry if I was too all over the place because I try to be as coherent as possible but sometimes I'm like, damn, I don't know. My mind is so spacey, I dissociate a lot, things like that. I think this is the last thing. Possibly. Be consistent on your healing journey and take holistic approach. Because let's be honest, pills will likely cure your symptoms when you go to the psychiatrist and he gives you pills. Both, you, your symptoms may be gone, but there will be some there can be some secondary effect you will not heal the core wound and your core wound is emotional abuse mostly bullying chronic criticism with time i think this is the we're, we're getting over know when to quit your environment know when your environment is bad for you and even if you can't quit right now for example i can't quit right now my toxic environment i still can't move out but I have learned to detach from it. I've learned to form my own identity and to have strong beliefs in my identity because it's valid. My spirituality is valid, my mental health is valid, my emotions are valid. And for you, it's the same thing. I'll probably do an ICMR video next time. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if you would like me to do an ICMR video. An ICMR video because throughout my life I heard compliments about my voice. Unfortunately, I can lose it every time. Life is taught, but this leads me to the next thing. Yo, man, be grateful for yourself. Like, you're strong, you're capable, you were able to fight with your demons for so long, and no one was there to clap for you. Clap for yourself. Be appreciative of yourself because. Unfortunately, no one will do that. We cannot wait for, for validation from other people. And you have to be your own best friend first. It's very fucking important to do this. Be your own best friend first. Be the best friend of your inner child. I didn't show you this closer. I was crying. I was crying. I won't dissociate, I swear, because those things still bring memories. Yeah, be original, be yourself, learn to operate from your authenticity instead of fear of abandonment. 
I will promise you, if, uh, even if things get worse before they get better, if you keep yourself on this journey, it will get better up until that point. As a bone, so if you stay until the end, I have a bone. What helps you heal your trauma? And I'll talk about this more in the next video. Somatic therapy. Working with your body. Oh, this helps release trauma in a different way. Because let's be honest, trauma is in your nervous, not just on your mind. And everyone who tells you this, this is bullshit. And as I said, you need some outlet. You need to let your pain live elsewhere. Just not in your body. Your body is not a coffin. I love you guys. I hope you will have a great weekend. A great day, of course. And a great year ahead. Because 2024, I'm sure it will be our year. The year of the warriors. The year of karma for those that did injustices and the year of Dharma for those of us that are actively working on ourselves and we had a lot of good intention. I'm manifesting this video to appear on the feed of the right audience. Thank you very much.